Welcome to the Whiskey Tribe. Really? We're gonna get into the ancient whiskey myth. Daniel, one question. Yes. Have you ever heard the older the whiskey is, the better it is? Yes, I multiple. Bullshit! All right, now here's, here's the situation. Older whiskey, it is this very, very common idea that you know, the more aged it is, just the better it gets over time. Yes. You and I have both been able to sample it's a, around 2,000 different whiskeys at this point. Yes. Not all at once. No. But we've gone through a lot of different samples and experiences, and we kind of know like the breadth and depth of what's out there in whiskey right, right. now. Right. Including some truly old, old whiskeys. While we're saying it doesn't necessarily mean good whiskey, it very often does though. Yeah. What does age do to whiskey? Age changes things in whiskey. That's okay. <laughs> no, so here's the thing about aging whiskey, yeah. is not everything changes the same way or in the same order or the same direction. And so things happen over time. Right. And so when you start out, you have certain chemicals and certain flavors and certain things happening. And over the first window of years, yeah. for example, in a new oak barrel, caramel and butter, uh, these kind of vanilla butterscotch notes, they go up and up and up. Okay. And certain things like certain phenolic notes start to go down and down and down, right? Okay. And so if you are looking for something very specific, you could really stop at a certain point, right? But they're not all just like inherently starting at the bottom and getting better every year. Okay, you know the barrel obviously is a big factor, right? Right? Was there anything in that barrel before you put the new unaged whiskey in there? Right. Um, the type of wood, the uh, char level, the toast yeah, level, exactly. And the then climate get, it's sitting in. Yes, that's another big one. Huge. The climate it can have a tremendous impact on how that whiskey ages over time. Yeah, which is why you don't get the same thing out of an eight-year-old bourbon that you get out of an eight-year-old scotch. For example, if we're talking about Texas, in a barrel, it can become too oaky mm -hmm. relatively soon. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna name the name of the master distiller we had a conversation with because this is a little bit controversial for us to come out and say, just because it's really old doesn't mean it's amazing. He said, these super, super old whiskeys out there, mm -hmm. these are super, super old usually because they weren't ready to sell for that long. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Think about that. Yeah, they would go in, you're working with hundreds of samples, yeah. and you're like, not this one. Yeah. And then the next round, you go in, nope, not that one. And it just keeps getting set aside until one day, right. someone roams through and either does a barrel pick where they want one barrel like SMWS, right. Right, and they try it and they're like, on its own, I really love it. Right. It doesn't match what you're looking for. Right. Or it just keeps sitting and keeps sitting and keeps sitting and eventually someone's like, it's 40 now, we should release it. Let's just, let's <laughs> and charge it. like $1,000 for exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah, yeah. The fact that uh, there's this broad belief that older whiskey equals better whiskey. I don't necessarily have a big problem with that very common myth being so pervasive because what do we know about people's enjoyment of things like wine and whiskey and, and so there are a couple things that are key which there was a study by uh was at roberta veal in the international business review 2009 it's a cited in vox where they talked about the fact that people compared 16 and 53 dollar wine and they inevitably preferred the 53 dollar wine when they knew that it was an expensive wine even though it had been altered with tartaric acid to make it taste bad. The second study was done um, that studied $10 versus $90 wine. Right. And they studied the brain pleasure centers of the brain right. while people were drinking $10, $90 wine. And what they found was that the people uh, empirically preferred the $90 wine as long as they were told it was the $90 wine. <laughs> and so that doesn't mean that you faked it out, you right. tricked them. Right. The pleasure centers in their brain- That is literal enjoyment. Literally enjoyed it more because right. they were told it was more expensive. Right. The point is the way that humans experience whiskey, because they know that is very special, right. that is very rare, that is very old, they will enjoy it more. Absolutely. What I want to do, I want to bring in um, our in-house blender, mm -hmm. our distillery manager, and uh, hi. Hi. <laughs> Come on over. 
Okay, uh, we have Emma. Emma is the head blender at Crowded Barrel Whiskey Company. And she, she is- She also is the distillery manager who basically runs everything at Crowded Barrel Whiskey. And she gets pulled over to other award-winning distilleries for consultation on what yeah. they're working on. I had Daniel pull out you know, a bunch of whiskeys. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go through and we're going to do some blind pours. We don't know what it is. We're gonna compare these to what is right now our favorite whiskey and decide, do I like this better or worse? than my current favorite. So you want a standby pour of your favorite just at all times? Yep. Okay. There are too many whiskeys for a true favorite, but I find myself ordering this whiskey over and over anytime I go out. Okay. When I can't decide what to drink and I always love it. Okay. So I'm picking Talos for 10. So this is 10 years old on Emma's Cash Drink the Floor. This is 12 years old on my Red Breast, and that's a 10 year on your Talos for there. Yes. Now, we're gonna have different categories, different mash bills, different regions, all of that stuff. It's just the enjoyment of your current favorite whiskey. So 100% subjective personal subjective enjoyment. Personal preference, what are you enjoying more? This or whiskeys that were porn? Maybe right. you find a new favorite. All right, so I'm not gonna tell you what it is until after you tell me which you yeah. prefer. Okay, fair right. enough. So let's start okay. out with the next totally so, blind. Yeah. We're gonna start with... All right, here Before you go. drink your favorite, yes, yes. try this one. So just short, quick notes on what you're smelling because it'd be interesting to see what it is that you're Ooh. differentiating. Honeysuckle. Honeysuckle? I think we're in American whiskey right now. Mm. Is this a space side? Mm. <laughs> I think we're in American whiskey slash is this space side. <laughs> I'm getting like a vanilla campfire type of deal. I was gonna say vanilla icing. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see that. Kind of and buttery. A little, a little bit of a mint, uh, like a phenolic rubbery note. Okay. But it's not American, although it is North American. Canadian? It's Canadian. Wow. In theory, this is, this is potentially Crown Royal, 25 year old You should have filthy mouth, because I was about to say, this is 100 miles away from the stereotypical Canadian whiskey. So this is Entrapment, which is one of the Orphan Barrel series. Yeah. And they don't technically say uh, where it came from, uh, like specifically distilled, so how but do they do know? say product of Canada and then uh, this was trapped in oak barrels inside the Gimli Distillery, which is also home of Canadian Crown Royal Canadian whiskey. So did 25 year old Crown Royal just beat your Lafroy 10, Emma? No. 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 I'll tell you what it did beat though. Any other experience I've ever had with Crown Royal. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Uh, like again, we don't know for sure, for sure. If this is Crown Royal, they just need to leave it in a barrel forever and ever, and it turns into amazing whiskey. I don't see how that could possibly be a problem for them. <laughs> Keep track of the glasses that you have, so oh, you no, know there's no... what's what. Okay. okay, without looking, woo wee! It's a little musty. Yeah. Kind of funky. Mm. Might I suggest- I just realized of something I'm getting on the nose of this. Slightly burnt baked bread. I was gonna say almost like, like, a, like a mentholiptus nose. I lean towards a rye whiskey because it has those spicy, herbal, minty yeah. flavors that I get on a lot of rye whiskeys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no, you're absolutely right. Absolutely you are so right. right that you just figured out it was a lock, stock, and barrel 18-year-old rye. Now, uh, ironically, I think this is also from Canada, um, but it's not from Crown Roth. I'm guessing it's from Alberta. Okay. The storage gets 100% rye. This is not Crown Royal yeah. in any way, shape, or no. form. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Woo. What is going on here? What are you doing, Emma? S smelling my arm. <laughs> this is a technique. But it's actually a real thing. Why do you it's smell? It's like I'm resetting my nose. Mm -hmm. And so this, your own smell is what you're most used to. So what are you smelling? I'm getting a, like a dry, soft, rounded, faint cherry note in the back. This ah, is really subdued. Which makes you think like you a, really landed right on the head on like that a, one. Like a bourbon? Yeah. Yeah. Has a sharpness on the nose for me though yeah. too, like a mm. um, slight peppery. Oh, do I want to try this? Try after it. It's seeing that face. <laughs> try it. <laughs> Breathe. Breathe. That grows. Yeah, it just keeps going, doesn't it? Yeah. So, what do you think would have that impact? Too long in a barrel. Yeah. yeah well, also. <laughs> Was Higher it? proof. Yeah. Oh, so oh. a lot of oils, a lot of. You say you were getting some sharpness on the nose. Mm -hmm. I was digging deep on that nose just to even pull out that dry cherry. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I got into the taste that oh man, there is some dry. For me, it's overly oaked cherry yeah. notes in there. What is this? This happens to be the Knob Creek 25th anniversary release, single barrel, mm -hmm. nope. at 60 percent, 60.85 percent alcohol. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm not mistaken that somewhere like 12 or 13 years old. Okay. Fun fact, I have had that before and I enjoyed the experience. Do you totally like it different. now? No, I, this... I, 
I like it, but it's not something I would have a glass of and sip on. Oh. It's like someone gave this to me and be like, oh yeah, like I can appreciate this for what it is, but it's not something that I would pick up for myself. So with the this, last time you had it. With the last time I had it, I poured it, I knew what it was, and I really enjoyed it. And I was with, a, I was doing a tour with a group of people. Case in point. It was fun. Of the ones that we've had so far, I gotta say, that's the one I like the least. While Daniel is pouring another round here, what do you like about Laphroaig? What are you finding in this cash drink Laphroaig tent? It's very earthy to me, and so the, you have the peat smoke, which I love those flavors, but I can still taste what's under the peat smoke. I get a lot of like light citrus, earthy notes to it, but when the first time I ever had Laphroaig, it reminded me of gardening with my mom. Hmm. And so I just tasted like fresh, dirt, just like garden dirt, the flowers, the, just everything about the experience of gardening with my mom. Okay, that is the next one. Mm -hmm. Ready, go. Whoa! Oh, that, man. Did oh. you just get an explosion of like fruit, apricot and, fruit. and yeah. mango, or mango, or melon? Super, super rich, super this juicy, super right. I know what this is, and this caught me off guard. This is usually a level of fruitiness that I only really get from whiskeys that have a sherry cask involved, but it's the wrong kind of fruit notes. This is an Irish whiskey. Okay. This is a teeling 25 year old single cask release. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, taste it. Same thing. Although it does have that sort of grain, uh, like lingering, not soap is the wrong word, but the sort of a clingy oh. note. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay, so the <laughs> nose of this had so many beautiful fruit notes to it, and then the palate, it just kind of, <laughs> it was more harsh, like I could taste the alcohol and like a minty kind of note to it. Yeah. And, but then the fruit came later. It was like, I was thinking and I was like, oh, I, I missed the fruit. And then all of a sudden it was like pff, apricot and mango. To compare it to. No, uh, it doesn't, see the thing is. To compare it to our favorite, what, it, again, it's just sheer enjoyment. What do you enjoy more? What are you gonna pour? I am pouring the red verse. Just for going for sure, casual enjoyment. Mm -hmm. I'm pouring this before I'm pouring the 25 year old thing. I just, oh, yeah. It's just nicer for me. No so, when y'all asked me here, did you really think I would enjoy anything more than LaFroy? <laughs> here we go. <laughs> oh, interesting. I do get a smokiness that reminds me of the type of peat smoke I get from Scotch, but it's not as strong as an Isla, mm -hmm. but the flavors are there, so I'm thinking it's an older Isla. I think, I mean, you're right on everything except for the island. You would be very close. It is a 30-year-old Talisker. Whoa, now. What's suddenly interesting to me, there's another Talisker on the table. Mm -hmm. Is this the same mash bill and all that stuff? Oh yeah. So how does this 30 year old Talisker compare to that 10 year old Talisker? The fruit came forward and the, the peat and brine mm -hmm. and salt subdued a little. Still prefer the 10. Me too. It has more punch to it. Still prefer the 10. I gotta tell you, uh, I'm going for the 30. Really? I am. But compared to Red Breast 12 cast strength. Oh, the finish is nicer on the Talisker. The Red Breast has the thing that I love about the Red Breast. It's the shortbread buttery cookie. And then the finish kind of leaves me with a little bit of just a barrel heavy note. Right. Which isn't bad. It's just not my favorite note. Right. The Talisker though, it's so matured. It's had so much time to round off all those of those edges. edges. The finish one. Okay. Everything leading up to the finish, it's still the Cash Drink Red Breast 12. Okay. Uh, was there another? Yeah, oh. it's, it's in front of you right now. So. Puff, puff, pass, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you smell? I'm almost getting this like um, cough syrup kind of medicinal note. I, I said Isla on the previous one and it was wrong. I'm mm -hmm. gonna say Isla on this one. Okay. It's almost like you added vanilla to that medicinal note. Like I'm comparing it to, and I'm assuming it's Isla mm -hmm. because of the, the peatiness, the brininess. I think I agree. I'm a little gun shy because I got it wrong last time, but I <laughs> do feel like okay. Isla is the territory we're in. All right. I think it is aged to the point that whatever kind of liveliness big, bold character that you usually get from Nyla mm -hmm. has turned a corner and with the age is starting to become watered down. It's old and feeble. Mm. From what I like my Islas to be is just bra, big, aggressive whiskeys. What do you like better? Well, I mean, it's You're the red, 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 red. Yeah, yeah. What do you like better? The 10 cash strike. Yeah. What do you think this is? Do you pour that 27 year Laphroaig? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, 
damn, Emma. But see, you liked your tin cast strength I better. I you, I love the tin. And Even this, the regular tin, not cast strength. Yeah. I love that. Just this is the episode that we learned Emma's a cheap date. <laughs> Get it on the front tin. Yeah. I'm good to go. <laughs> There's love a 27. No, 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 you don't need the 27. Get that tin. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if we blend all the most expensive whiskeys together? We're about to find out. All right, Emma's, Emma's blending that. all of the super old whiskeys together. Okay. Now, Daniel, one of the interesting things that we've often found is whenever you blend a lot of complicated whiskeys together... You can collapse them. Yeah, it can basically just neuter the whole ballgame. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily that take That doesn't make sense, but it, neutering ballgames, that's it. Don't worry. Yeah, about it. I love those <laughs> metaphors. It's very boring. Yeah. It's just kind of like a flat... flat. Yeah. Vanilla. It, but Emma, you know what? Them. Herbal. You know what's not boring? It's time for... Bullshit or Legit! Brought to you by Smooth Amblers. You kind of phoned it in on that one, Emma. You want to try again? <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's time for... Bullshit or Legit! <laughs> I'm glad we both yeah, went that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There is a moment. There is a moment. Yeah. Where I looked at Daniel. I looked at Daniel. I was like, don't you dare make it worse. <laughs> don't you dare make it worse. <laughs> uh, we're going to go through and get some trivia questions. We polled the Whiskey Tribe on some answers having to do with video games. That's true. Question number one. According to the Whiskey Tribe, Emma, what is the best game of all time? Daniel, what say you? It is Red Dead Redemption. It's one of the most amazing, truly more recent, open world video games with a storyline worthy of a full length movie and a soundtrack that's maybe one of the best ever created. That's like the only game Daniel's ever played. <laughs> it was entirely coincidental that it was voted up into the number three most popular <laughs> spot, the number one most popular spot. It was uh, Elder Scrolls Skyrim by a mile. Had you ever heard of the Skyrim game? Have you ever heard of the Red Dead game? I, I thought so. so. Which one is it? <laughs> Bullshit! I'm born! Oh, you got it! That was so Shit. fast! That's because I know Skyrim. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, and there's, uh, there's a... Thank you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, one of your favorite games of all time is what? Breath of the Wild. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Another wildly popular Legend of Zelda game was Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Which of those two games was more highly voted in the Whiskey Tribe, Breath of the Wild or Ocarina of Time? Danny, what's here? It's obviously Breath of the Wild. I don't even need to argue it, because it's so freaking obvious. It's a far superior game in every level. I know what you're thinking. Breath of the Wild, it's a great game. The thing is, for it to be very highly voted up in best all time, it's not old enough. But what is more classic, and therefore more best of all time, is the Ocarina of Time. I was playing that shit when I was but a lad. Which is why it's no good. Emma, if you get this, Yo, win! Star Wars Knights Old, Old Republic. Republic. Do you have an Xbox uh, no, play? No, okay. <laughs> and, and your mic. Let's say you, Emma. Bullshit! Oh. <laughs> He's so fast. There's no lead up or anything. There's just ruthless. <laughs> just right in your just ear. Ruthless right in your bullshit. Ear. Bullshit. <laughs> Emma, unfortunately, you're wrong. What? Yeah! <laughs> no. What? Final question, Emma. You've gotten one out of two so far. If you get two out of three, then you get to win the grand prize of... You win this grand prize decanter from the Smooth Ambler. Mm -hmm. Daniel, why do we know about this decanter? It's hand blown. Hand blown. <laughs> it's beautiful. From Blanco. My Blanco! All right, Emma, final question. What is the one and only video game that Daniel's dad has played? If you've watched every single Whiskey Vault episode, you should know this answer. If you haven't, how dare you? How dare you? The game was called Adventure. However, it was spelled without an E, because at the time, file names were limited to eight characters. It was a text-only maze game. This sketchy little hobbit. It was actually <laughs> the, one of the earliest classic video games. It's called Zork. And have you, you met Brad Whittington a time or two. You know the kind, the kind of person that he is. The way he played the game is he went room to room, decision to decision, and he mapped out on that old, that old crusty ass printer paper with like the holes on the side. He printed, dot matrix. He dot matrix. He printed out all of like the possible choices so he knew exactly which rooms to go in and what to do. It was Zork. Emma, what's say you? 
bullshit. No, I beg to differ. You get nothing. <laughs> you get nothing. Fog of shame. You don't get this. Son of a. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Smooth Antler for sponsoring this community game. Do you feel shame? The most shame. You are the HR department. So if you're going to complain, you would complain to yourself. Yeah. Wait, you're HR? Yeah. You Pretty much. <laughs> oh, no. Alex, there is no HR. There's no HR. No HR. There you go. A little more. We're going to be launching a giant tape ball at the wall of magnificence because all the magnificent bats, sure. Because all the magnificent bastards, it, because all the magnificent <laughs> bastards at the Patreon. Uh, we're gonna do like a hundred dollar gift card giveaway for whoever's name this lands on on the wall. Then uh, they can win a hundred dollars in the Whiskey Tribe merch store. Let's. Don't look at him up. You gotta be fair. Okay. Don't, don't look. Eyes are closed. All right. Oh. Oh, jeez. Smacked oh. the shit out of something. Did you see it? Do we need to consult the someone about <laughs> somewhere and up in here, quick. Oh, dude, it hit right at the edge of the light right here. Oh, I think that's a Jim Nash. Jim Nash. Jim Nash, hundred dollar gift card into Patreon. You magnificent bastard. Now I think we also need to do all of the uh, the bastards on the bar. All right. All right here we go. Ready. Oh, <laughs> what did we land on? Ian, Ian Campbell. Campbell. All right, you All right. from the other direction. Other direction. Are we back to Ian? <laughs> it is Benjamin Nicely. Benjamin Nicely. All right, you bastards. Check your Patreon. Thank you for the support. You guys have a good weekend. Yeah. Oh, we